It's fair to say that adventure can be had on any motorcycle. All you need is one engine, two wheels, a tank of petrol, and a dream of where you want your adventure to take you. This video isn't about roughing it on cheap bikes and bunking in hostels. This is a clash of titans. A test between the two most advanced adventure motorcycles that have ever been made. So just like the naked and sports bike sector, the adventure bike market has many different parts to it, from low capacity lightweight adventure bikes through to middleweights and larger capacity adventure bikes such as the BMW GS and the Honda Africa Twin. These two, however, are different. It's just that nobody's given them a name yet. Well, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna call them a super adventure. Why? Well, the first thing is that both of these bikes have got engines that are either derived from a full-blown superbike or a super naked in the case of the KTM. They have got more electronics than the Starship Enterprise. We've got semi-active uh, suspension. We've even got radar-enabled cruise control. This isn't a normal adventure bike. These are something very special. For 2022, the Ducati Multistrada V4S is in its fourth generation, designed to be simultaneously more sporty and more capable off-road. All in the mission to rule all roads. For us, the Multistrada's claim to rule all roads meant more than just riding on tarmac, and it set the tone for our super adventure test that would see us tackling some of the Lake District's very best mountain passes roads, beaches and its trails. The Ducati's 170 horsepower V4 Gran Turismo motor is fantastic. From crawling up tough trails to flat out on flowing roads, it's amazing to think this engine is derived from the snarling Panigale V4 Superbike. Surprisingly, it's incredibly easy to ride as soft as butter when you want, and goes like stink when you don't. We had no issues with overheating, a feature normally synonymous with Ducati V4s, and the engine was impressively resistant to stalling, ideal for riding off-road terrain and low-speed manoeuvres. Matching its brilliant engine is the handling. Just wow! The concept of an adventure bike may conjure up thoughts of skinny tyres, vague front ends and wallowy long travel suspension. Ducati have taken that perception and thrown it out the window. The Multistrada handles like a proper sports bike. Crisp steering, a connected front end feeling, fantastic stability at high speed combined with a strong engine brake to make it hold a tight line. Our V4S Sport model came fitted with top-of-the-line Brembo braking system and an excellent ABS system too. Loads of power, excellent feel and disabling the rear ABS allows skids and rear wheel lift. Track day in an adventure bike wouldn't be at the top of my list, but the Multi would be at the top of that list by a fair margin. The KTM has a monster in its closet. A beast! The 160 horsepower V-Twin may be down 10 horsepower on the Ducati, but write it off at your peril. It was more than capable to match the V4 motor on every acceleration test we did, thumping really hard out of the gates every time. There is almost nothing between these two in terms of outright performance. V4 versus V-Twin, while they feel and sound a bit different, it's a tough one to decide which is best. 
Both are equally fast, incredibly refined, playful, and both bikes being able to wheelie off the throttle in third gear. I'd challenge anyone to ride either one of these hard and want anything more. Perhaps the only way we can separate the power plants is the fuel range, which is an area that the Ducati struggles in. Our worst tank on the Multi yielded 106 miles and our best was 140 miles. Comparatively, the Super Adventure comfortably manages over 200 miles. If we were putting 17 litres in the Ducati's 22 litre tank, we'd be consistently topping up the KTM's 23 litre tank with 11 litres. The Multistrada consistently uses 50% more fuel than the KTM. There is no doubt that the 1290 is a peach of a bike to ride. KTM machines always steer clear of sensible, hanging around on the wild side of the spectrum, which in part makes them so endearing. But the Super Adventure introduces a level of sophistication not experienced in some of their other models. Don't get it wrong, the KTM will happily wheelie, stoppy and power slide until you've had your fill, but it's way more than that. This is a refined, do-everything Super Adventure machine. Our experience was slightly hampered by the Mitre's tyres fitted to the machine. While these are mostly okay in the dry, a lot of our test was done in the wet and on loose terrain. On wet tarmac, the rear starts stepping out with very little encouragement, the front wheel goes vague and you start to lose confidence and off-roading on wet mud, they were pretty much useless. These tyres have got no grip. With a better set of tyres like the Pirellis that are fitted to the Ducati, the 1290 would have been much closer handling-wise. Although the Multistrada felt more orientated towards carving up mountain passes and clipping apexes, the widely adjustable electronic suspension settings and fork anti-dive on the KTM meant that it was never lagging far behind. That being said, it felt like the 1290 could be adapted to excel better on the rough stuff than the Multistrada. It would be really well suited to knobbly tyres, some engine bars and bark busters to bring out its off-road capability. Then we set about trying to understand the objective differences between these two machines. Similar to their performance, they are really closely matched against the tape measure. It's as if both manufacturers actually benchmark each other's bikes, which of course they do, and is probably why they are so close in this regard. The main difference is the handlebar width. The Multi has super wide handlebars. Ridden in isolation, the KTM's handlebars are perfectly fine, but both test riders preferred the comfort, feeling, and the leverage provided with the wider bars on reflection. The Multistrada tipped our scales at 242 kilos with pretty much a full tank of fuel. The KTM was 7 kilos lighter at 235 kilos, fully fueled. It's not drastic, but the weight management of the KTM felt slightly better to us. It's easier to kick off the side stand and it's easier to pick up off the ground too. Not that you'd want to make a habit of doing that on either bike. While the Ducati makes a slightly tighter turning circle, you can't complain at either bike in this regard. They're both super easy to swing around on a tight switchback or turn in a trail. Both machines have the excellent radar-enabled Bosch Adaptive Cruise Control. If you haven't used this system yet, it is incredible, enabling excellent and really relaxing long-distance travel. Set your desired distance to the vehicle in front of you, the max speed that you want to travel at and the technology simply manages your speed and the relationship your bike has with the other vehicles around you. It keeps you calm, safer and ready to compress that long trip you've got ahead of you. The Multi complements this with an additional radar in the back that powers the blind spot indicators incorporated into the mirrors. In practice they're really helpful. There is only one way to describe the Ducati's electronics package, sophisticated. 
Like the Skyhook suspension system that has a claimed 400 possible combination settings, the reality is that in dynamic mode with adjustments made for rider modes, it just does everything great in the background. The traction and wheelie control is similar. It's a really sophisticated system, smooth and really nice to use. Our Lake District mountain passes are enough to send any traction control system into overdrive, particularly when wet, bumps, steep inclines combined with low levels of traction. It must be said that the KTM manages these challenging situations in a less seamless way, initiating a kangaroo effect of hard power cuts when the rear wheel brakes traction. The KTM wheelie control system is also less intelligent. It lacks a bit of consistency, sometimes cutting the power early, sometimes allowing an aggressive high wheelie, leaving you thinking that it hasn't quite caught on with the mono that's been initiated. In this regard, in some extreme settings like our mountain passes, it can make for a better experience to actually turn the traction control off on the KTM. Whereas on the Ducati, you can tweak a setting within the electronic suite that enables a good experience within the comforting mirage of electronic protection. Comfort-wise, you aren't gonna complain about either machine. Both are armchair-like as far as a motorcycle is concerned. The KTM could do with the optional heated comfort seat to match the Ducati's level of comfort, but that is a reasonably priced upgrade from their official accessory book. Despite their large front ends, one area where adventure bikes seem to really suffer is wind buffeting. They simply do not cut through the air with the same efficiency as a sports bike, for example. The adjustable screens fitted are designed to reduce that effect. The Multistrada featuring a clever one-touch adjuster, the KTM is operated by a turning wheel. Admittedly, it's a tough area to get right, but the Ducati has the edge in our opinion, pushing the wind slightly higher over your head as opposed to never being quite 100% right on the KTM. Both bikes look excellent in our opinion. The KTM is powerful. Its robust looks match its robust performance. When you look at it, you get the feeling that it was engineered to get the job done, and keeping the weight low was up on the agenda, which is backed up with its performance on the scales. The Ducati by contrast is sleek. It's got careful lines, excellent paint finishes, it's well balanced front to rear, and its top spec components match its beautiful finish. Our V4S Sport Spec Multistrada costs £23,695 and for that you get the panniers, the centre stand, heated grips, heated seat, the radar system, a Kropovich exhaust and carbon mudguard. Our KTM costs £16,865 including the tech pack and the heated grips. Both Super Adventure machines are rightly premium on the price front, but the fact that the KTM costs nearly £7,000 less than the Ducati is significant. Both bikes have crash bars available from the accessory list and undoubtedly this would be an excellent addition for adventure riders wanting to go into the unknown. It was the first time either myself or Ollie had ridden on a beach and certainly doing so on a big adventure bike was a new experience. But it didn't take us long to figure out the amount of fun on offer. With electronic packages set to off-road modes, our socks pulled up, it was time to stick a leg out, open the throttle and attempt a few power slides. Needless to say, we had a lot of fun and ticked another thing off the bucket list. As for the off-road part of the test, I made the classic mistake of doing some of my scouting work at the desk. Selecting a certain trail that looked like a goer from a YouTube video posted a few years ago. In reality, it was much rougher than I expected, with a mix of steep inclines, loose rock and wet slippy grass, even though that probably doesn't look like it on camera. While both machines mostly managed it, 
ultimately there were lines that we weren't prepared to cross with these stock super adventure machines. This clip is of me trying to explain on GoPro that we didn't want to go any further. The two to three foot ruts that we encountered presented too much of a challenge for us to tackle with the 20,000 pound motorcycles shod with unsuitable tires and simply aren't built to crash like enduro bikes. It's just the grip thing because normally if you had a half decent trail tires on you just plod up the side. Yeah. But if you're coming up even to get to this point, you have to get through that muddy bit. Just for the camera, we're not chickens, but this terrain has got a bit gnarlier than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, and I don't think we're wimping out just for this massive, like three foot divots. I think what we're gonna make an executive decision and take them back down the hill. But you know, that's part of adventure, right? That's part of super adventure. Um, and I'm sure these two are more capable. We just got to put better tires on them. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> well, this is what I'm talking about. Look at, look at this. You know, no problems on the 701, but on a, on a 250 kilo bike, we're probably, we're probably pushing it a little bit. Let's go back down the hill, Ollie. In this regard, I think we reached the limits, even if it was us deciding to turn round and back down the trail. At the end of the day, these bikes are so capable, but no matter how much confidence you build up, you can't hide 240 kilos, slick tires, and breakable plastics. Both bikes ridden in isolation are marvelous. There were parts of this test where we just had to pinch ourselves and imagine how our adventure could get any better, irrespective of what bike we were on. The answer was, we weren't on an adventure. We were on a super adventure. In the end, after riding them on every conceivable type of terrain, both the KTM and the Ducati have earned their stripes, in our opinion, as the most super of the adventure bikes. But that's not to say they can have it all though. The KTM has its own nemesis and that's the fact that the Multistrada V4 exists and is so good at pretty much everything it does. The Ducati, however, creates its own nemesis when the fuel light comes on about 80 miles too early. But the real Goliath that both these bikes have is that large parts of the market are blissfully unaware about how amazing these super adventure bikes are. So the answer to the real question is, do we need a super adventure in our life? The answer, probably yes. Yeah.